Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to News Dose. And today we have a couple big events to talk about uh, for actually both Nintendo as well as Xbox. Now on the Xbox side of things, they actually technically have three different events planned for August. Yeah, over the next couple of weeks, we probably will have a lot of Xbox related topics to talk about. So if you're into that type of stuff, you might wanna stay tuned for all of that. And then over on the Nintendo side of things, well, it looks like the next Nintendo Direct may have leaked out online. Now, this one isn't quite confirmed yet, but we will go over all that and what they could possibly talk about here at that event. Now, with all that said, let's just go ahead and jump right into our first topic of the day. And I know for the most part this year, we've talked about a lot of different delays. This has become a bit of a common thing. And that's why when we get news like today, it's such good news because we actually have two highly anticipated games that have officially gone gold. Yeah, that's right, and one of those games is one that I am extremely excited for, and I've said that over and over again on this channel, and that would be Psychonauts 2. And I, you know what? I just love how they announced this game has gone gold, because if you go look on Twitter, you can actually see how much humor they injected into this little announcement here. Uh, I, I just love it, and this is just kind of that quirky humor that Double Fine is just so well known for. Double Fine is just a charming little studio, and now that they have been acquired by Xbox, I am so excited to see what they can do with a real budget. With that said, though, I mean, the good news here is that Psychonauts 2 will officially release on August 25th, now that it has officially gone gold. And the cool thing here is that this game will launch directly into Xbox Game Pass, so if you're a subscriber, you need to absolutely check this game out. Now, as for this other game, Deathloop also has officially gone gold, and that means that the PlayStation 5 console exclusive will release next month on September 14th. Now, technically, this is an Xbox Studios game, but this is currently a PlayStation 5 timed exclusive, and there's definitely some excitement surrounding this game. Arcane is one of those really underappreciated studios with just such high quality games, and we've seen that time and time again, whether that be with the Dishonored franchise, which Deathloop looks very similar to, or with the most recent Prey game. That one was truly fantastic, and now that it's gone gold, it will release more than likely on September 14th, more often than not, when games have gone gold outside of maybe Cyberpunk 2077, they don't get delayed anymore after that. So it looks like over the next month, we're going to have a couple big games to look forward to here with Psychonauts 2 as well as Deathloop. Now, speaking of games to look forward to over the next month, we also have a game by the name of Ariad of Spirits, which will be releasing later this month in August. In fact, it will release on August 20th for the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, as well as Steam. So regardless of what platform you have, you're going to be able to play this game, and they're kind of explaining it as a story-driven action-adventure game where you can immerse yourself in a story filled with emotion and surprising turns. It does sound like that they are priding themselves on the story itself, and you know what? I just think that this game looks really good. This is something that I always enjoy doing on this channel. I do like to give recognition to some of these smaller independent games that might be going a little overlooked, and really, I haven't seen anybody talk about this game and that's too bad because i think the art style here is very visually attractive the gameplay looks like a lot of fun it's kind of got that combat style similar to something like let's say zelda I'm not saying that it is a zelda like game but it, it definitely looks like an, an overall enjoyable experience and something that i think people might want to keep an eye on hopefully it turns out to be as good as it looks but again, Arietta of Spirits will release on August 20th for pretty much every platform, and if this is a game that might interest you, you might want to go ahead and think about adding it to your wish list. Let's go ahead and talk about Xbox for a moment, because this is one publisher in specific that just does a great job with independent studios. They really have done a great job with these independent games in recent years, especially with the addition to Xbox Game Pass, which we'll get back to here in just a moment. But one thing that Xbox did do earlier this year is that they partnered up with Twitch Gaming to just do this big independent showcase where you can show off all these different indie games. Now, I did cover the first ID at Xbox event earlier this year, and I thought it was a little long. I think it was like three hours or something like that, but there was quite a few very interesting and very fun looking independent games there. 
So it's just a great way to introduce these independent games and allow these different indie studios to talk about their games. That's what they did with the first event. And the good news here is that they actually have another ID at Xbox event planned for August 10th. And again, this will be in partnership with Twitch Gaming. It will take place at 9 a.m. Pacific time on August 10th or 12 p.m. Eastern time. So this event will take place next week, and of course, I will cover it in case you miss it. With that said, they are already teasing a few different games here, including The Artful Escape, Ollie Ollie World, Library of Ruina, and this one is one that I'm actually pretty interested in, RPG Time. I really like the art style of that game, and as an RPG fan, very interested to see how that one works out. It's actually kind of interesting to think about, but this is a Japanese game here, and I mean, Fans have been wanting more JRPGs on Xbox, so here you have RPG time. Now, I will say this, if you are an Xbox Game Pass subscriber, you might want to pay attention to this event because they are teasing some Xbox Game Pass related announcements, which means more than likely some of the games that they talk about here will be heading over to Xbox Game Pass. Now, actually, that's not the only event for Xbox in the month of August. In fact, they technically have three total events that they're going to be taking place in throughout August, and that includes, of course, this ID at Xbox event on August 10th. But you also have QuakeCon on August 19th, where you can see some updates for some different Bethesda-related games. And then on August 25th, and this right here is the big one, but yes, Xbox will also be at Gamescom this year. Jeff Keighley has confirmed the kickoff showcase for Gamescom will take place on August 25th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And really, if you're an Xbox fan, you might want to pay attention to this event because Xbox has confirmed that they will be here. Now, what they have to show or announce, I'm not really sure, but I mean, it would be nice to get some updates on some games we don't really know too much about. I mean, it would be nice to get some updates on games like Hellblade 2, there's Fable, and Really, we haven't even got an update for Halo Infinite's campaign in quite a while, and they could show Halo Infinite's campaign over here at this Gamescom event. Regardless, I really am looking forward to this Gamescom event. Gamescom is one of the biggest game events of the entire year, and quite a few different big publishers will be here, including 505 Games, you have Activision Blizzard, Bandai Namco, Bethesda, Electronic Arts, Koch Media, Sega Europe, Team 17, Ubisoft, Wargaming, and then of course, you have Xbox. So potentially, we could get some big announcements here at this Gamescom starting on August 25th with all these different publishers attending. Now, unfortunately, neither Nintendo or PlayStation are taking place at this Gamescom event, but there's actually some good news about all that as well because it is starting to look like both PlayStation as well as Nintendo has some plans for their own events starting September. Yeah, according to some recent leaks, it does look like a Nintendo Direct will take place in September, which we're going to get to here in just a second, but also that PlayStation event. Now, this PlayStation State of Play event that's coming over in September is actually coming from Jeff Grubb. Jeff Grubb did briefly mention that a PlayStation State of Play was going to take place in September, where they're going to go ahead and confirm that Horizon Forbidden West is going to be delayed to 2022. So that, that's not necessarily great news or anything like that, but hopefully they do have some other announcements at this PlayStation State of Play. And, I mean, really, Jeff Grubb has proved time and time again that he does have some real sources across the industry. He has gotten some things wrong on occasion, but... A lot of the things that he does talk about has proven to be accurate, and this has happened time and time again. So while not exactly confirmed yet, as of this moment, it does look like a PlayStation State of Play will take place sometime in September. Now, as for Nintendo, it does look like they also have a Nintendo Direct planned for September as well, and this is according to Samus Hunter. Now, Samus Hunter is yet another insider that has a pretty good reputation for these types of leaks. And this is what Samus Hunter had to say. After teasing this in a couple of posts, I'm going to talk about it more clearly. Yes, there is a Nintendo Direct scheduled for September, around the time WarioWare launches. It is useless to make a list of games passing them off as certain, because, in fact, I still have nothing in hand. It's too early, but crossing some data, I can tell you things that I see very likely. Samus Hunter then goes on to predict different games that will be there, and I do agree. I would expect Metroid Dread, Advance Wars, and the new Mario Party to all show up here at this next Nintendo Direct if it does indeed happen. 
But that is something to kind of keep in mind. It still is an if this Nintendo Direct actually happens. A lot of these Nintendo Direct leaks don't always actually end up happening, but considering this is coming from a credible insider, I thought I would at least talk about it today. And if it does happen, it'll be really interesting to see exactly what they have to show here. It would be really nice to get some updates for some different games such as Splatoon 3 and then Metroid Dread. Very excited for both of those games and it really would be cool to see some gameplay of Splatoon 3. We haven't really gotten much information about that game just yet. But also there's a few interesting rumors kind of circulating right now. I have heard a little bit about a Kirby RPG in development, though I don't know exactly how true that one is. And the other one, which we have heard a lot about from several well-respected news outlets, is a new Donkey Kong game being developed by the Mario Odyssey studio. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't sound like this is going to be a 3D Donkey Kong or anything like that, and it's still going to be 2D. But regardless, a new Donkey Kong game possibly being in development. Yeah, I think that right there is very exciting. And it would be really cool to get an, an official announcement of that. I know there's also some hope for some Zelda anniversary related announcements as well with Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD. And also, where in the world is Bayonetta 3? Are we ever going to hear about that game again? Regardless, you know, that's kind of the thing when it comes to these Nintendo Directs. You never really know what's going to happen there, and for that matter, you really don't know when they're going to happen. So for the time being, just kind of take all of this with a grain of salt. Now, I also actually have a very welcome update for the Dead Space remake. Now, the Dead Space remake was recently announced by EA, and I know there's a lot of excitement for this game. Of course, Dead Space is one of the best horror games of all time, and to see it get that Resident Evil remake treatment... Yeah, this is definitely really exciting, but there's been one looming question that surrounds this game. When are we actually going to get to play it? It did sound like they were still early in development and that it would be years away, but that might not actually be the case after all. Yeah, according to the Venture Beat journalist Jeff Grubb, the Dead Space remake is actually being planned to launch fall of 2022. Yeah, let's just go and check out and see what he had to say. And fans should get a chance to experience the results of those efforts when Dead Space launches in fall of 2022, according to sources familiar with development. This means the game is a little bit more than a year away. Of course, in the tumultuous games industry, target dates slip frequently, and it's important to note that EA has not yet publicly stated or confirmed release timing for Dead Space. So there it is, and while this isn't exactly confirmation or anything like that, and the release date could still slip into 2023, this would still mean that Dead Space is closer to releasing than what I think most of us originally thought. From when I first heard about this game, I wasn't expecting to see much about this game for at least two years, but according to this, it might very possibly release as early as next year. So if you're looking forward to this game, that is very exciting news, and for that matter, 2022 is really starting to look good for gaming. I mean, I've kind of said this before, but there's already a lot of games being delayed into 2022, so the beginning of 2022 is just looking absolutely stacked, but now here we have Dead Space, and that might release next year. Yeah, count me as very excited. Let's go and take a look at the poll of the day though, and something that we talked about yesterday was just how massive the Nintendo Switch has been. It is just incredible what the Nintendo Switch has done this generation, with them already selling 89 million units worldwide, and the amount of software that they have been selling is just insane. The fact that they already have six first party games that has eclipsed 20 plus million units sold is absolutely crazy. But the thing right now that I'm kind of watching for is the Nintendo Switch versus the Nintendo Wii. As of this moment, the Nintendo Wii is the best selling Nintendo home console of all time, but the Switch is quickly looking to surpass that. And I think by this point, it's not really a question of if the Switch will outsell the Wii, it's more of when will it outsell the Wii. So I thought I'd ask you all, do you think the Nintendo Switch will overtake the Wii in total units sold by the end of 2021? And well, 70% of you did vote for yes. You all are very optimistic that the Switch will surpass the Wii by the end of this year. And you know what? I think it might be tight, but I think it's 
very possible that this might actually happen. I mean, if we take a look at the total units sold for just this year. Back in February, Nintendo had announced that the Switch had sold 79.87 million units. And now here we are in August and it sold 89 million units. So it's approximately sold 10 million units in that time frame. And that's kind of the thing. During the holiday months is really when you start to see hardware just dramatically sell. So I think 12 million units sold in the next four months, I think that it is very possible, especially with the OLED model. There are going to be a lot of people that actually goes back and rebuys the OLED model on top of all the new consumers that are buying the Switch as well. So I think that's really going to benefit the Switch this holiday. Though I think the question for me is, can they produce enough units to meet demand over the holiday period? I mean, we are going through a semiconductor shortage right now, and that could affect the Switch throughout the rest of the year. We'll have to kind of wait and see on all that, but yeah, I do think it's possible that the Switch could surpass the Wii by the end of this year. At the very least, I think it will have passed the Switch by the end of their fiscal year. Anyways, though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.